Good morning to all those tuning in. This is the Rebel Lemon, and today we're going to be getting the other endings to Kato, along with the other six pictures. Um, so this episode might be a bit disjointed, but I feel like it would be much better for your time. Um, and less waste of time watching me replay the same stuff over and over again. So, that being said, let's just jump on in, shall we? This is the No Cats ending. So, essentially what happened was the fat cat ended up in the baker's care. The stray cat ended up, well, continuing on being a stray and then the small orange cat um, the scared one it ended up going to a shelter um, so this is the result of us failing to get any cats well then I'm home I call out as I enter but I receive no answer I peek inside Rose's room, only to see her hunched over her desk reading. She looks concentrated, so I back away not to interrupt. I tell her about Tangerine when she's finished. Some time later. It's been a few weeks since I first met the cats. I knock and enter Roselle's bedroom. Whoa, how's school? Well, I got a lot to catch up on, but I'm pretty sure I can do it before finals. That's wonderful. You've been working very hard lately, and I want you to know that I've noticed that, and that I'm proud of you. Clearly, somewhat embarrassed by the unexpected praise, she just sort of stands there for a while before finally answering in a quick manner. Thanks. Fancy having a movie today. Once you feel like taking a break, that is. She assumes that ponderous look that she always used to have when she pretended that it might be possible, and my heart sinks. Yeah, we could do that. How about tonight? I'll be done for the day by then. I figured you'd- wait, what? Really? Stunned with disbelief, I'm at a loss for words. It's been so long since we did anything, really. While the whole cat adventure might not have been- might not have done as much as I'd hoped, it must have done more than I had first thought. Could things really be getting better now? I scarcely dare to believe in such a thing. Recovering from the fundamental shock, I smoothly reply, Absolutely. Do you know what you want to watch? Should I pick something? I've got one in mind. She nods with a hint of a smile. How now I dare to believe. Well, probably not tomorrow, and probably not even the day after that, or one particular, particularly soon. I'm now sure that she'll get back on her feet. I need to keep doing what I can to help her along, but one day she might not need it. This ending is where we only managed to reel in one cat. Uh, my goal with this ending was to get the orange cat, but uh, to get the picture, I kind of made it a little too angry, so eh, it is what it is, we get ruffles. So let's see how this one goes. I'm home. Ruffles welcomes me in the living room, looking out over the room. That cat 
just likes its views. I walk up to it and stroke it gently over its head before heading to Rose's room. I knock on the door before entering. I find her hunched over some papers on her desk. Am I interrupting something? No, not at all. Did you spot... Oh yeah, instead of um... Uh... Tangerine, I named it... Oof. So, there you go. I just need something quick. Uh, Ruffles sneaks in and sits down next to me, keeping an eye out on what's happening. I did. It was stuck in a tree. But don't worry, I got it down from there. That must have been awful for it. How is it now? All good. It's been taken to the animal shelter. A good one that will take care of it and find it a home. That's a relief. Her attention turns to Ruffles, and she manages to coax it closer for some scratches. It seems like they get along really well. Some time later. So yeah, it seems the more cats you have, the better mood she tends to be in. Uh, but just seeing how uh, much the endings don't really change, um, I'm not gonna get all of them. Just like the main ending, so zero, one, two, three, and yeah, and then we'll be good. Then we'll look at the pictures. Some time has passed since we ended up having Ruffles live here with us, and I, for one, have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's always difficult to tell with Ruffles, but I think it has enjoyed it too. Ruffles favorite pastime is enjoying the view from high up and pushing whatever we forgot on our tables off the ledge. The silent companionship is something I've really come to appreciate. I tap the door frame to Ro's room, alerting her to my presence. Hey Ro, can I come in? Of course, step right in. What are you up to? Just some coursework. I'd like to... i like to be caught up with everything before I get back to class. It has taken a lot of hard work, but Ro has worked really hard to catch up for last time. You're doing great. Just make sure to take breaks. I will. I've been thinking about trying to harness on Ruffles. I bet it would love a little walk outside. So would I. I actually came in here to say that I'm leaving for what for a walk. Have fun. While out strolling, I think of Ro's progress. Her interest in school has been relit, and I think we have Ruffles to thank for that. I don't know why, but the cat inspires us to do our best. I often spot it sitting on Ro's desk as she studies. It's almost like it knows she needs it there. There is still a long road ahead, but with Ruffles I, with us, I'm feeling a lot more optimistic of what's to come. This ending is two cats. Um, I did get it in my last video when I did finish it, but um, this one will have a different variation. This will be Ruffles and our fat cat um so we'll see how much that changes and the reason i didn't do the fat cat and uh the small scared kitten is because i'm pretty sure the kitten just takes on traits of uh whatever other cat you have so it just will become lazy like it but that's a hot pocket this is I'm not too keen on checking out just because this game's quite repetitive to play through and takes a while. But anyways, let's continue on with the ending. I'm home. I find Ruffles 
upon its high ground, keeping its eye on its surroundings. Roselle's door stands shut, and I'm sure I found both Ro and Tigger in there. Oh yeah, it is now Tigger? For the sheer fact, that's... I've just been mispronouncing it. So much that I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it as Tiger. I pet Ruffles gently, and the cat seems to enjoy it. It looks to me like it has decided to be a domesticated cat, more or less, anyway. Now that it's getting older. I slip inside Rose's room, and I find her running away with Tigger in her lap. She stops and notices me. How did it go? Did you see Oof? I did. Someone had scared it up a tree, however. Oh no. The poor thing. Has it gone down yet? Yes, it has. It's also on its way to a good animal shelter for care. I couldn't leave it out there again. Well, that's a relief. She hooks the cat on her lap. What are you writing? Oh, you know, just some school stuff. How about I leave you to it and go fix us some food? That would be great. Thank you. Some time later. Hey, fat cat. What I say? It was on the couch. I wasn't sure if Ruffles and Tigger would get along, but it would appear my woes had been for naught. We followed Rose's steps to introduce the cats to each other, and it worked somehow. It wasn't easy to sell the idea of sharing the house to Ruffles, but Tigger won it over like it did to everyone else. Every time they pass each other by, they butt heads, which is something Ro says is affection. I walk up to her door and knock before entering. Hey, Lemon. What's up? Not much, Ro. How was the lecture? It was alright, I suppose. Interesting content, but a bad presenter. Well, ain't that university in a nutshell. She and I both chuckle. Oh yeah, it sure is. That and overpriced course lecture. Actually, I'm done with the book I have to read. Why don't, why don't we go out and grab some ice cream or something? I'd absolutely love to. And since you've worked so hard, it will be my treat. Ha, <laughs> thanks. It feels good to have caught up again. We head out carefully through the door so Tigger doesn't slip out with us. That cat likes to accompany us a little too much at times. We decide to go to the cafe, quite a far away from home, and for the entire walk we share laughs and jokes like the old times. Yeah, so all the endings um, with like one cat will be slightly different from each other, and all the endings with two cats will be slightly different from each other. But I don't care enough to go through this game eight different times. Yes, I've counted them out. I did the math twice. So you're getting one of each. So there you go. Alright, so this will be the ending where we get all three cats. But the observant among you will notice that we're actually starting in a different place. And that is because once you get this cat, a lot of things actually change. So I thought it might be actually worthwhile to just show you getting all three cats right to the ending. So let's do that. So what we have to do here is just walk away and have it follow us. Because I actually maxed out its uh, happiness for us. Would Tigger voluntarily follow me out of the alley if I just called for it? Could hardly hurt to try. 
I give the cat a last pet on its head, and then walk away, not stopping before I reach the next street. Not that far of a distance, really, but it can be for a small cat. I make eye contact with Tigger, that my eye, that eyes me curiously. Without breaking it, I crouch down and reach out a hand. Come here, Tigger. I click my tongue and the cat's ears respond, homing in on the sound. I call again and after some hes hesitation, it makes its way down from its bed. It trots lazily over to me, swaying with each step. I offer my hand for pets and before accepting it, Tigger glares at me, resentful of me making it walk all the way here. But still, I did it and I'm very proud of it. I snuggle it properly and then it comes the real test. I place my hands around Tigger's body and pick up the cat. Gosh, it's heavy. I shuffle it around so I have a good hold around it and the cat strokes its face against mine. Seems like Tigger passed the test or maybe it was that I did. I'll have to tell the owner and the bakers that, I've, that I'll take Tigger home with me. I hesitate at the door, but I don't want to drop the cat now, so I walk in with it in my arms. The owners will have to excuse me, but it's a special occasion. Yeah, Tigger is a chunkers of a cat. The owner's eyes open wide in surprise when she sees us. Well, would you look at that? Seems like a little charmer has been charmed itself. Seems like it doesn't mind coming with me, if that's fine with you guys. Of course. We wouldn't be happier that it finds a proper home. And knowing it's you makes it feel even better. Does Roselle know about this? No, I'm just hoping she won't mind. Diona lets out a huge laugh. I can't imagine she ever would. Say hello for me. I will. And I will keep you all updated on Tigger. Uh, that's what I call it, by the way. Tigger? It's a suiting name. Tigger and I bid farewell to the old bakery and the alley. I never found my keys, so they must be down by the canal. First, however, I break the news to Roselle. So I did message her beforehand in another run, and she just doesn't answer. So I'm just gonna go in and surprise her. It's the same. None of her responses ever really change. It would be fun to see her face when I break the news. I snuggle against Tigger, making sure it feels comfortable doing the walk home. I don't get any complaints, even when we have gotten far away from its old home. I walk up the stairs to find its new one and take a deep breath before opening the door. It isn't locked, so Roselle is home. I walk up to Rose's room and knock on the door. Can I come in? Sure. I slip inside and I'm sure my excitement is visible all over my face. Roselle doesn't take notice, however. Her eyes are set on my precious cargo. Tigger? What? What is that cat doing here? You know, the bakers are moving... Uh, are moving place, so... Uh, places, so Tigger is looking for a space to live, and... And we got plenty of space right here. My thoughts exactly. I drop the cat, and it looks around the room. It locks eyes with Roselle and walks up to her and strokes its body against her legs, begging for cuddles. She gives in, crouches down, and gives it all the pets at once. I guess I have to scurry off and get some things, like cat food and such. Get diet food. We have to watch its weight. Yeah, it's a chunkers. We we'll also need a little box, cat litter, unscented, some toys, preferably one with a stick. And one with arrowhead ends. That's too much for me to remember. Write me a list, will you? I will. 
I head out, and a few minutes after, I get a message of a very long list. I managed to nearly I managed to find nearly all the things she me mentioned and drop them off at home before heading straight back out and down the canal. I've gone for quite a long enough without my keys and I have to find them. Yeah, big change. I told you, uh, viewers, listeners, I don't know what to call you, jackasses. Uh, as I get to the town's Town path, it's already dark, becoming dark. I'm placing my hopes on that the setting sun will hit my keys just right and make them shine up. I keep my eyes peeled on the ground, making my way back to my workplace along the canal. A hunch makes me look back, and I surely find Ruffles following me with silent steps. I wonder for how long it has been doing that, or why. Possibly to keep an eye on anyone in its turf. The cat keeps stalking me a slight distance and I ignore it the best I can. My keys are my top priority right now. I walk along the entire path without spotting them. I guess I'll walk back, check some of the busier areas more carefully. I spot that Ruffles has stopped following me and is playing with something next to the edge of the canal. Good that is keeping itself entertained. So what you're supposed to do here is actually check the cat like we did before. I'm a bit curious to what would interest Ruffles. If I if my keys can wait this long, they can wait a little longer. The cat is sitting next to the water and is poking at something casually. Almost like it doesn't want to admit that it's playing. When I get closer, I get a better look at the object. Wait! Those are my keys Ruffles is playing with. I can't believe the cat managed to find them. I don't have time to take a sigh of relief before the cat pokes the keys so close to the edge to the watery doom. I must do something quick to prevent a catastrophe from happening. So what you're actually supposed to do is just walk up and grab him. Ruffles is no stranger anymore. I call out to the cat and simply walk up to it. Ruffles looks up to me and watches me curiously as I bend down and grab the keys. Good job finding them, Ruffles. There, crisis averted. My keys are found and secured and Ruffles doesn't appear to hate me. So what we're supposed to do here is hang out with the cat a little longer. Or at least, I did everything correctly, got all the happiness, so I guess you could just go home. But I don't know if that would actually work, and I'm not willing to test it out. The sun is still setting, and I got to no work tomorrow either, so I can safely stay a little longer and spend time with Ruffles. I make sure to sit comfortably next to the cat, and we both bask in the sun's last moments. I have a feeling that Ruffles isn't really much of for cuddling or playing, but prefers just the company. I find it really sweet that r someone like Ruffles would enjoy my company. How far we have gone. Not a long time ago, it would have been crazy to be this close to Ruffles. Like, the cat would probably have killed me. That, that must mean it trusts me pretty well now. The sun disappears in the horizon, and reluctantly I make the decision that it's time to leave. I hesitate before reaching out my hand to give Ruffles a pat on the head before standing up. See you around. I turn to start to walk away with steady steps. See, this is the part that always kind of like gives me like iffy feelings because I don't know if the cat will ever follow, even though I know it will. I walk down the very familiar town path. I wonder how Roselle is doing at home. After all, I recognize a faint after a while, I recognize faint footsteps behind me, and turn around to see that Ruffles is still following me. I shrug, thinking it will stop eventually, but I have the town path that's still following me. You coming with me, huh? Ruffles responds by following along the path to my door. This is my stop. Ruffles has stopped and is looking at me, waiting. 
Having said goodbye, I opened the door, only for Ruffles to waltz in on it like it owns the place. The cat looks around, jumps up on the sofa to get a better look at things. Well, we have a visitor. It takes Roselle a moment to make it to the door, and when she steps out, she has Tigger in tow. She freezes. As she spots Ruffles and turns around to shove Tigger back in her room and closes the door. What's going on? Not sure, but it decided to follow me home. Why did you lock away Tigger? We can't just throw two cats together. Who knows? Who don't know each other? And expect things to, to go well. There's a process to these things, you know. Can't say I do know. How does it work? You have to gradually introduce them to each other. At first, they will just have to meet each other through my door, so they have a chance to get used to each other's presence. So, Ruffles can stay? If it wishes to, I won't be the one to kick it out. We'll need another bowl, though, and Ruffles should probably have some richer food. I'll get on that tomorrow then. I notice how her attention shifted towards the sofa and how her eyes slowly sets on Ruffles. The cat eyes the new human with suspicion, but I know Roselle can get that barrier down in no time. I don't want to disturb her work, so I leave it to her. I'll buy the things before my walk tomorrow. There we go. And now we get Tangerine slash Oof. I personally prefer Oof more. Even though it was just an accident getting. I don't know. Maybe my next cat will name it Oof. We'll see. I bought the new things and I'm heading out for my Sunday stroll. By the look of it this morning, Ruffles and Roselle are getting along, so I'm not the slightest bit worried over leaving them alone. As I near the pedestrian path, I peel my eyes, trying to spot a certain kitten. I'll most likely find it at its usual spot, but I don't trust it not to have moved. I see the tree in the distance, and it grows closer as I walk. There's no kitten to be seen. I reach the corner and circle the tree, but I can't see Oof. Maybe it actually got home. If that were the case, it would be great. A meow crushes my hopes, and I look around, still not spotting it. The next meow, I can tell it comes from above, and I look up. Oof looks down at me from a high up branch in the tree. What's it doing up there? It doesn't look very safe. I haven't climbed a tree in ages, but I did it back in the day. Except for the first part, it looks uh, like a pretty easy climb. So we'll wait, see if it can come down on its own. Um, this is basically the same as last time, so I'm not going to lead it, save my voice a little bit. Um, I will tell you though, I did find a bug where... Um, if I just click or press this forward button, it wouldn't go. Um, so we find something to climb on. I look around, finding... Yeah, it's same stuff. Um, and the way to fix it, I found, was either to press this or this button, uh, which is auto scroll. I don't know. It's just a weird bud bug. I triggered it like two or three times. Um, and I'm not actually sure why it happened, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, so it was just super weird. Uh, let's coax it with food. Yeah, so if you want the cats, you just have to make sure the um, face over here is either neutral or positive. You want to try and limit the negative ones as much as possible. Otherwise, we'll be good. And okay, so this is where it gets uh, the path is drastically different, and this should be the ending. It's just one more cat. Sure, if it 
It's just one more cat. Sure, it'll be a lot of work, but Ro but with Rose's expertise, we'll easily manage. I make sure to text her that we're coming this time, so she can prepare for the place for Oof. The kid sleeps the entire walk home, only waking up when I unlock the door. Roselle jumps up from the sofa when she hears us and sneaks up to us. Where's Raffles? In your room. She reaches out a hand and tenderly strokes the kitten's cheek. Hello there, sleepyhead. Maybe because it's very tired or because of Roselle's magic, the kitten isn't scared by her touch. It was stuck in a tree, so it's pretty tired right now. Oh no, I'm glad it got down safely. How about we fetch Oof some food and water and you can tell me all about it? Sounds good. Will you take it? She nods and I hand her the sleepy kitten. Seconds later, it's hungry feasting on its food and I sit down next to Ro in the sofa. For the first time in a long while. And we'll jump cut to, well, we're not jump cut cutting, but essentially in story-wise, it's a jump cut to some time later. Ah, uh, that was a dumb explanation. I shouldn't even explain it. Yeah, there we go. We got all three cats. That is one chunkers of a cat. Someone was overfeeding it. It has already been, what, almost a year since they all moved in here? So much has happened. The chaos the first few weeks ha when introducing cats to each other are long over, and they are all getting along well. A little too well, actually. Me and Ro are outnumbered two to three in most matters. Tigger and Ruffles have really taken it upon themselves to teach the youngest everything they know. Oof's not as shy and scared anymore, but I wish they could have held back in some manners, as the mischievous, playful little thing never ends bringing trouble. We have a surprisingly calm time together, as we wait for a row to come back in with the mail. The door bursts open in a blur of yellow. Row bursts in, surprising both me and Oof. Tigger and Ruffles are not so much, as the former is still sound asleep, and the latter is seemingly never surprised by anything. Oh wow! She really is looking a lot better than before. A lot happier, too. Hey, Lemon. Guess who passed the finals? I take an exaggerated thinking pose and reply. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. No. Then I snap my fingers and turn to her. Oh, I know. You did. Yep. Her face is almost as beaming as her ye dress is yellow. You know, Ro, I'm proud of you. I knew you'd pull through, and look where you are now. I like the cat's, uh, socks. Those are actually super cute. No more hiding away in the dark room, and letting your life get away from you. It's great to have the old you back. She's quiet for a moment, but it's a good sort of quiet. I couldn't have done it without you, you know? You help me more than you think, I bet. Anyways, enough of that. I think we both earned ourselves a treat. Well, you did all the earning, really, but I won't complain. With that, we leave the apartment under the complaint supervision of Ruffles, who would maintain order while we are gone. To some extent, at least. We meander around for a good long while before choosing a cafe to stay at. After that, we continue to walk without any clear destination, like the good old days. Ro and I both stop as we spot a cat in the distance. We share a smile and we both approach it together. Maybe it's not just like the old days. So, now that you've graduated, do you still want to go through with it? Of course. The cats helped me find myself again. So I wouldn't want 
So I want to give something back. We'll need a bigger place. It might take some time, but I want to create a cat shelter. Better than any other. We crouch down to not frighten the cat as we close in. What should we call it? How about... Cato? <laughs> Name drop. That was actually pretty awesome as an ending. I think that's the best ending yet. And these are all the pictures. And so, starting off with ruffles. If you throw a rock at it, uh, you kind of irritate them. So, this is the picture you get. If you try and uh, get closer, um, he doesn't really like it at the beginning. So, he will make a distance. And then this is the perfect picture of you respecting his, um, like, space. Now, with the Chunkers Kitty. Yeah, that box is way smaller than it actually looks in-game. He barely fits. But, um, he kind of looks cute, to be honest. And I'm glad we actually got him. Or well, the baker does. And this is his big gleaming face. If you try and take a selfie. And this is the perfect picture. You stand up and take it. Okay, so these are the ones where you upset them. These are neutral. And these are the ones where you uh, essentially stroke the ego. This is scaring the little kitten. Oof. Or... This is where... This is the hardest one yet. Like, you have to try and get, like, neutral all the way through. And it's hard. You're very easily spook it. So this is just it looking at you very curiously. And then this is it actually playing with you. Yeah, so that's everything, really. Um, I do have some final thoughts on the game. Um, I will say the different variations with the endings, like uh, between mainly the six in the middle, are really good, um, to be honest. Um, but I will say my favorite is the three cat ending. Um, it just feels like your whole adventure comes together and it's like a proper story. Um, so yeah, I would say that is my favorite one. Um, and then I will say, other than that, um, there's a few points at which... Um, the scenery is, like, explained to you, but isn't shown. Um, my biggest example would be with, um, uh, Ruffles. Um, when he's pinned down by the other three cats. Um, I would have kind of liked to see, um, the whole scene there. Um, but I mean, it's not like you have to pay for the game or anything. So... As far as it goes, I think this is actually a pretty great game. Um, I will say though, um, just to get everything, like picture-wise, or like to see all the endings and its variations, it's actually very tedious. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of blanked through like 90% of it. Um, just to get to the endings or um, to the va different variations or whatever. Um, I don't know what the best course of action there would be. Um, especially just getting like the pictures themselves. That's a pain to do. Um, but again, I honestly don't know. Um, but it is definitely worth it to see the endings. At least one of each variation, I suppose. Um... But yeah, that's um, that's it. That's because uh, I already gave you my thoughts um, on like everything else about the game. These are just my updated thoughts. So yeah, I think it's a really good game. Oh, uh, just one more thing. This right here uh, is the continue from where you last left off button. Um, so I think it could actually 
move this up a bit and put continue here, but that's like very minor. So, um, yeah, I'll en end it off there. So, thank you for tuning in on our frequency. This is the Rebel Lemon signing off. So, good night and sweet nightmares.